Here are the top five mistakes I see a lot of sellers make in today's market. I'm Becky McCulley, your Charlotte real estate expert. Let's get right into it. The first mistake I see people make is with regard to pricing. And I know I sound like a broken record when I say that. I was meeting with a potential seller recently and they were under the impression that we needed to price the house higher than what we realistically wanted to get for the house because they wanted to have room for negotiations. And unfortunately, that is a really old school way of thinking. Now, as a result of the pandemic in the last several years, buyers are really trained that they're going to have to offer list price or more. So if you price your house a little bit higher than what you want, it's going to actually deter people from coming to look at the house because they're going to say, I think this might be overpriced. So they're expecting that the seller is not going to be willing to negotiate. People are not dumb. Buyers have access to all sorts of resources as well as if they're using a realtor and they can pull the data to see if a house is priced fairly or if it's overpriced. And if they think it's a good value, they're like, wow, this one's you know underpriced. The market's going to drive the price up because you're gonna have more people interested in it because they feel like it's a good deal. Again, like I said, they're sort of trained lately that they're gonna to have to pay at least list price. So if you price it that way correctly, you're ultimately going to get what the fair market value is of the house. Another mistake I see people make is preparation. They think I've lived here, house is fine. All of those scuff marks that you've gotten used to that you walk by every day and you sort of don't see them anymore, that's the first thing potential buyers are gonna see. One of the things that I notice whenever I walk into a house with a buyer is the air conditioning vents. You know, they're those big metal grates in the wall and they will be dusty and dirty. The first thing that I think when I see that is, oh, these people really don't have like a regular cleaning and maintenance schedule, what else has been neglected? I know it's annoying and nobody wants to do it, but those are the things that really matter and make a difference. Talking to a realtor about where to spend your time and money is always going to be the best answer. You might be spending money on things that aren't going to return any value. Buyers tend to pay more for things they can see and feel. They're not gonna necessarily pay more for a crawl space that's been encapsulated because they don't see that and they're not going to experience that every day but they are going to experience the primary bathroom they're gonna to have to go in that multiple times a day and so if that has been updated and it's pristine people are gonna pay more for that and this isn't just for the inside of your house it's also applicable to the outside of the house making sure that your gutters are cleaned windows are cleaned if there's any sort of loose shutters or siding or bricks making sure all of that stuff is taken care of and again landscaping is always a bonus. So those are the types of things to really think about when you're prepping your house. The house has never been lived in basically is the impression you want to give people. The one thing that nobody tells you when you sell your house is that it's really inconvenient and you don't get to use your house whenever you want, even though it's yours. Showing your house is one of the biggest hassles of selling a house, but it's also one of the most important things. Sacrifice a little bit and plan for that up front. It's really important to understand where you're going to be working during the day. If you have kids, understanding what the plan is for them, getting them involved in the process, because obviously like they're not going to be the best at keeping things cleaned up and organized and make your house available as often as possible for showings because the more traffic you get in there the better off you're gonna be I had a situation recently where I was working with a buyer and we wanted to go see a house scheduled it through the scheduling app and I get a text from the real estate agent and they basically asked me some questions about can you confirm that you're okay with the location and the price and the condition of the house and I was like well I haven't seen the house I really can't confirm that and so I was really kind of confused then he responded back and said the sellers have kids and it's really inconvenient for them to leave so we want to make sure that you really want to see the house my clients said I guess they don't really want to sell their house do they and I was like that's exactly what I thought when you're selling your house especially for the first week or two I would definitely have a game plan for where you and your family are going to be and while each individual showing does not take a significant amount of time there are options for still making your house available, but having a little flexibility. For example, if you only want your house to be shown between say 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. or whatever that time block is, something that you should just like think about and talk to your realtor about during that preparation phase. 
Another huge mistake I see sellers make is not being open to negotiation, really taking everything personally and being offended by certain offers. I get it because sometimes as an agent, when another agent gives me what I would consider a low ball offer, I get a little irritated and I just think, you know, you're the professional, you should be advising your client appropriately, but you have to take a step back and you just have to say, every offer is an opportunity. So if somebody is coming to you, it doesn't mean you have to accept that offer, but there's enough of an interest that that person submitted an offer. It's important to respond to every offer. You don't know if somebody is just not informed or they're being poorly advised. And so they're just gonna throw out this offer that you are not excited about at all. But the thing is, is you just counter offer. You say, hey, thanks so much for your offer. I'm not willing to accept those terms. Here's what I propose. Now at the end of the day, what's the worst that they can say? No, oftentimes in the industry these days, there are a lot of agents who do not follow up. and so. I think really making sure you're open to all terms of the offer, comparing them because they're not gonna be apples to apples. And so really understanding the various levers within the offer to make sure you're getting the best deal for you and not just focusing on the sales price. The final mistake I see people make is not using a realtor or not utilizing their realtor. For example, someone may hire a realtor, but they don't take their advice. They're constantly listening to Uncle Joe, Aunt Mary, their friends who just bought a house or reading something on the news, and they're not necessarily keyed in to the current market and what the local standards are for selling a house. So they're hiring a realtor oftentimes, but they're not necessarily taking their advice and they're saying, no, I want you to do it this way. At a certain point, the realtor doesn't have much option other than to do what their client wants, but they're probably not going to get the best outcome. For example, if a client wants to price a house higher than what the market is saying it's realistically worth and what buyers are willing to pay for it, then that's not going to have the best outcome for you. It would be kind of like you're going to court and you hire an attorney and your attorney is advising you to you know, plead the fifth and you're like, nope, I'm gonna get up on the stand and I'm gonna tell them everything. It may not be the best option for you. It's the same thing with real estate. You really wanna make sure that you are hiring an agent that you trust because you should be taking their advice. And finding a realtor that you can trust can oftentimes be challenging. I would say, you know, definitely ask friends and colleagues for recommendations. You can search YouTube, for example, and see realtors who put out content and see if it's somebody that you feel like you gel with and, you know, reach out to them. But I would definitely recommend having a list of questions to interview several realtors because you wanna understand what their style is, what their personality is, because you're gonna be spending a lot of time with them and talking to them a lot. So you really wanna make sure it's a relationship that you say, okay, I feel comfortable with this person. It seems like they're knowledgeable. It seems like they have my best interests at heart. Those are just the top five mistakes that I see sellers make when trying to sell their home. There are definitely others. If you have any questions or you're thinking about selling your house and you want a little advice, please feel free to reach out or comment below.